morning, everyone. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Victoria online. Yes, we're still online, not back in our physical plant. Um, and we don't know when that is going to happen. So just stay tuned and we'll let you know as soon as we know something more about that. I do have people asking me from time to time. But meanwhile, we're here with you on Sundays on Zoom and we're recording so that people can watch uh, our services online throughout the week as well. So it's lovely to see your faces here today, those of you who are, are joining us on Zoom. And I would like to invite Reverend Rachel to start with an opening prayer. Rachel? Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Karen. I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent Spirit who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because the Divine Presence, that love, that sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever spirit wishes because spirit goes there with me. I will be healed as I let that divine presence of love teach me to heal. And so it is. Uh, thank you so much, Reverend Rachel, for that lovely opening prayer. And I'd like to invite Darlene now to share some of her beautiful music with us. Thank you, Reverend Carrie. And for all of you muted at home, please join me in singing Karen Drucker's song, I Send My Love. I send my love over the mountains. I send my love over the sea. I send my love into the heavens and it returns to me. I send my joy over the mountains. I send my joy over the sea. I send my joy into the heavens and it returns to me. I send my peace over the mountains. I send my peace over the sea. I send my peace into the heavens and it returns to me. I send my love over the mountains. I send my love over the sea. I send my love into the heavens and it returns to me and it returns to me Thank you Darlene lovely song you're welcome. We're having a few technical glitches this morning. I hear it with the sound and I see some people are popping in and off the screen or on and off the screen. So um, we're just going to know that right here and right now that stopped. So we just get into a perfectly smooth service from this point forward. Thank you for being here with us today. It's always wonderful to see you. And so um, when I was looking for the title for today's talk, I opened up um, a book by Reverend Deborah Johnson. It's called The Sacred Yes, and I have referenced that book before. Um, and 
the title of one of the chapters in the book is Confess Your Heart. So I thought, oh, that's a pretty good title. So I wrote it down and I hadn't read the chapter. And I was, was assuming that it was about speaking our love and speaking it again and speaking it still once again and just, you know, sharing that love from our hearts with everyone, our love, our compassion, all of the beautiful qualities of God. And then I um, read the chapter this past week and that really wasn't what it was about. Well, not, not precisely what it was about. It was really asking us to question, what is it that we're hiding? What is it in, that inside our hearts that we don't want to face? You know, the, the pain, the sorrow, um, the, the shame, the guilt, you know, whatever those feelings might be, anger, um, resentment, um, think, things that we've been shoving down, shoving down and haven't, haven't been wanting to look at. And she talks about the importance of us really, really looking at those things. Now, mixed up with all of that is lots of love and, and, and memories, you know, memories from, from distant times, memories from when we were just little babies, which may seem a challenge to, to remember. But I, I was thinking about um, Paul Purcell's book. He, he's a doctor who had done a number of heart transplants. And he talked a lot about, about the heart and about the heart's memory. Um, his book was called The Heart's Code. And one of the astonishing things in it, he said that with people who had had heart transplants, that when they recovered, that they were different. Um, you know, uh, first of all, most of them had a soul's purpose. It was just extraordinary, especially if it happened with younger people. Um, but also he said people would have different tastes in food and in music and and sometimes even a different vocabulary. They would use words that they'd never heard before. They didn't even know what the, what the meaning was, but they would just come popping out at an appropriate time. And I, and I was fascinated by that, and I won't go into the long stories because there are many of them in the book, and I have shared a couple of them with you before. But just, just a reminder that, that in our heart is, is everything that we could ever imagine. And I was reminded of that this past week when I received a... Um, a, a video um, through email from my granddaughter, Sadie. Um, she had digitized uh, um, a piece of film from when she was just a little tot. She was two years old and her baby sister had just come home from the hospital. Well, Sadie was not quite two, but close to. And and there were, here was this image of Sadie holding her little sister's hands and, and clapping them together and singing an ABBA song, hands up, baby, baby, hands up, give me your heart. Give me your heart. And and I laughed when I read it because I remember visiting her when she was that age and pushing her on a swing and having her singing that song. And I, I mentioned it to, to her mom and dad. I said, you know, uh, I haven't heard you play that song. I haven't ever heard you even being aware of it. And they said, well, we never have been. They said, Sadie just opened her mouth one day when she started talking and sang that song. And... We were, we were all fascinated by that because how could she know that song if she had never heard it before? And when I came home, I was talking to a dear friend and, and his daughter had been uh, a nanny for Sadie from the time she was born until she was three months old. And he said, oh, that was, that was his daughter's favorite song. And so his daughter must have sung that song to Sadie when she was an infant between one and three months old. And I wondered if she, if she also clapped her hands as she sang it to her. But in her memory, as just as a little baby, that song was implanted in a loving way because she was treating her, her, her little sister in such a loving way. And so, you know, as, as Paul Purcell said, our hearts have greater memory than our brains will ever have. Everything is stored there. So if everything is stored there, and if some of the things that are there are, are really negative, um, you know, the, the, you know, there's the good, there's the bad, there's that mixture of everything in between. Dr. Holmes called it accumulated consciousness. And he said that accumulated consciousness, or what he said about it, 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 is, it is the sum total of everything we've ever thought, done, said, or seen, consciously or unconsciously. So just think about that, that accumulated consciousness that that lives in, in our mind, lives in our hearts. It's all there. And so there's a lot of stuff there. And what Deborah Johnson was saying is that 
we need to overcome some of that stuff. Because if we don't, if we've just been pushing things down, pushing them down, pushing those feelings down that are not positive, then it comes a point where it's kind of like we've stepped into, into wet cement and it is hardened around us and we can't move forward. It, it, it prohibits us from from doing the things in our lives that we might otherwise do because we're stuck in in a subconscious feeling of and or and sometimes it's even conscious of just not being able to do things and we tend to blame things outside ourselves for those you know oh well i i just don't have the opportunities or i don't have the education or um you know i'm not smart enough or I'm too young or I'm too old or, you know, on and on it goes. There are all of those reasons why we feel we can't do something. But in fact, he says that's, that she, she says that's not the case at all. You know, we simply need to get rid of those things that have been implanted there that are not positive and allow the joy, allow, allow the love, allow, allow that power to just take over and to stop dwelling upon those things, you know. Our, we, we, we can be chastising God, you know, like, why is this happening to me? Why is it happening now? Um, is this stuff ever going to go away? You know, it repeats itself over and over and over again. You know, it's really depressing. I just want to hide. I want to run away from it. You know, I, I really don't deserve this. You know, the thing is, we, when we're saying these things, we don't understand we're not understanding that we have power over them and that's really what we need to come in touch with you know so so you know where is this god you know, i talk about this every week where is this god in as and through us you know expressing through us we are spirit having a human experience you hear that from me all the time but i love the way that wayne dyer expressed it once he was talking about he was using a metaphor of a beautiful clay bowl and um, and he said, you know, when you look at the bowl, it's uh, it, it it can be very ornamental. It can have beautiful designs on it, and then of course inside it's a container, and just with just space in it, unless you filled it up with something. And he said, but if you break that clay pot into a lot of pieces, then all that's left is the space. I thought, isn't that interesting? If you think about it that way. Break the pot and all that's left is the space. And the space is God. And so when we are feeling broken or, you know, if we're at the end of our physical lives and the heart stops beating and the breath stops, you know, the, the, there, there's bone and tissue and fluid there, but there isn't that space that contains the life force that contains God. So... It's important for us to, to look at our hearts as that kind of container, a container of God stuff, a container of love, container of joy, all of the, the wonderful qualities of God. But what have we got mixed up in there with it? And how are we going to get rid of it? It's something that we really, really need to be working with. We need to get into the shadows and to clear those shadows away. Deepak Chopra, in his book, The Future of God, wrote, If God is the creative source of all, then the creative source of everything must be in us. And of course it is, and that's what we have to work with. It's what we need to do to clear what is in the invisible, but what we can feel. Because it's our feeling nature that is creating things in our lives. And if we don't get rid of those negative things, then we're still going to see more of those things around us where we're saying, why is it happening again? Why me? How can this be happening to me? What did I do to deserve this? Here it comes again. Those are the things we need to clear in our hearts, let go of the energy around them so that we can express in the greater way, so that we can express our lives in an even greater way so that we can face what it is that we've been hiding behind you know what is in our sacred hearts what is it that we need to just surrender to let go of to give it to god you know that confession is so important when we do the I mean, Catholicism, I guess, has something wonderful going for it in the sense that that people can go and confess their sins, um, and we don't really believe in sin in our teaching. Um, sin, of course, is um, 
Uh, it comes from the ancient Greek word missing the mark and repent is of course to try try again. But in the Catholic religion people can go and they can be forgiven for whatever they've done. And I don't know if that lightens them up at all or if they still go away with some of the guilt wondering if it happened. I, I haven't done a poll of that. But at least we do know that there is a place where they can go where they can confess their sins to somebody. And, and it helps them a lot. It, it allows clarity. It guides us. You know, and we can't necessarily find it or touch it or grab it, and yet we carry it with us always until we're ready to just let it go. You know, um, Blake, uh, William Blake wrote a, a wonderful poem, um, and I'm only going to read a little bit of it here. To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. Every night and every morn, some to misery are born, Every morn and every night, some are born to sweet delight. Some are born to sweet delight, some are born to endless night. It's, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful poem, and I'm sure you've all heard it many times before. But to me, it speaks to the magnificence and the enormity of God. You know, of God that is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, always, always there never stepping anywhere away from us. And, and so I marvel at this, especially this time of year, this beautiful spring, when we see all of the flowers everywhere and the blossoms and the trees are just about to burst out some leaves. And there's that, that lovely scent of springtime in the air. And I look at the tulips and I just think, isn't it a miracle that it's a tulip and not an onion? And how did it know to be a tulip? and not an onion? And how did it know to be a yellow tulip and not a red tulip or a purple tulip? It's, it, it just astonishes me that, you know, when we really think about all of nature around us, of how, how did all of that happen? And science says there's something that is in plants that's in everything called IntelliKey. And it's, it's, it's what programs us to what we will be, programs all nature to what it will be. It's what makes the yellow tulip yellow and the red tulip red, and so on. And so we, we have all of this potential within us to be a beautiful blossom or, or to be a, a really distasteful something else. I was going to say an onion, but onions can be very sweet, very sweet as well. So what can we do about this? You know, we have this eternal intelligence within us. We really need to use it. Um, you know, why are we struggling so when, when the greatest love of all is living right inside of us? You know, it, it's, it's in our hearts. It is there for us to use. It is there for us to forgive. It's, it's there for us to, to forgive others, but also to forgive ourselves for whatever we think we may have done wrong and instead to just lighten ourselves up. And I was thinking about this week and, and about it this week, and I was reminded of a very, very dear friend of mine who made his transition, uh, I guess it's now probably close to 10 years ago. And he was quite a bit older than me and, and just a, a wonderful human being. Um, he was very famous, and he um, late in life um, came out and said that he was gay. And it created great stress for him with his family and with some of his friends, but mostly with his family. And he was feeling incredibly guilty. And he got on a plane and he flew to Vancouver and he spent some time there just in quiet contemplation. And one day he was just moved by spirit to, to go to the beach. He had grown up in the Catholic religion. He had a Jesuit education. He was one of the most brilliant people that I'd ever met. Um, and and he, had, he had fought Catholicism his entire life. It just, you know, because of the guilt that he carried with him and because of what the nuns in school told him as he was growing up um, and, and of the guilt that he carried from things that they said to him. And he said he walked out onto a rocky point on a beach in Vancouver and he fell to his knees and he gave himself absolution. And he said from that moment on, once he rose up from his knees, he never felt guilty again. He was filled with joy. He was filled with love for all humanity. He forgave his family for 
for not being able to accept him as he was. He loved them just as much. He was no longer in pain because of that. He gave himself absolution. You know, Deborah Johnson said, we're all diamonds. Each and every one of us, we're all diamonds. She was channeling, in this book, she was channeling God. And she said, God said, we are, we are all diamonds. And each time we give up some of the negative stuff that's within us, when we confess our hearts, we add another facet to the diamond and we start to shine more and more brightly. The question is, are we prepared to do this? We can confess to somebody else or we can confess our hearts to ourselves. Sometimes confessing to ourselves is the biggest step we're going to take. But I know that with um, Alcoholics Anonymous, there's a, one of the steps, I think it's the fifth step, but I'm not certain, uh, where, where people are asked to confess to themselves, uh, or to God and to one other person, uh, whatever it is that they need to release. And so, and typically to a spiritual person. Uh, and so I have had people come to me and ask if they can confess to me whatever it is they need to confess because they're part of AA. And I say, well, of course you can. And usually they're really suffering and they're, um, you know, they're embarrassed about sharing something. And, you know, we'll do a prayer and then, you know, we'll be in silence for a little bit. And then I just allow them to open up. And typically when they're finished, I say, is that all? And it, it, it strikes me that, that we all carry so much guilt and so much shame for things that really just don't seem to be that big. I mean, obviously some people have some big things that they need to release, but everybody has a story and we all tend to think that our stories are bigger than anybody else's and worse than anybody else's, when in fact they're not. And so, you know, we, if we can share this with someone else, share it with God, if we can get down on our knees and give ourselves absolution, then we are allowing all of the facets of that diamond to just shine with light. And as we shine with light, that what felt like a concrete block around our feet that's been holding us back just springs us loose. And we're able to just go forward and accomplish so many things instead of dragging everything around with us. Today is a Muslim holiday that um, is... Uh, apparently signifies the, the start of new life, kind of like a new year, but the start of new, the start of new life. I thought, you know, every day is the start of a new life for us. And so let's treat today like the start of a new life. Let's just let go of all of that old stuff. We don't have to feel guilty about anything. Let's just surrender it now and right now make a commitment that we're going to live the life that is God's life because God's life is my life now. It's your life right now. It's a life of spirit. It's a life of joy. It's a life of love. It's a life of forgiveness. It's a life of healing in absolutely every way. You know, just remember that you are spirit itself. Spirit itself. It is ever present in your life. And we get to use it all the time. And so let's just let go and let God take over. Let love take over. Let forgiveness take over. Let us shine our lights and let us stop being critical of ourselves or of anyone else. And the thing is that typically when we stop being critical of others, uh, we, we stop being critical of ourselves as well because that criticism, criticism is coming from our own insecurities. So let's do it. Let's get together today and just do it. Let's pray. Let's go into the love. Let's be the love, the love that we are, the light that we are. It's always time to reveal the truth, the truth of who we are, the truth of everyone around us, and to see the truth in everyone around us. That's the magnificence of life. And here in this beautiful springtime, what a great time to just dive right in and to be that love and to be that beauty, and to be that vibrant, vibrant expression of God that we are meant to be. Bless you all. And, so, and I thank you for, for being here today and spending this time with us. I invite you, if you, um, if you wish to do so, to go to our website at www.cslvictoria.org and you can make a donation there. Um, through PayPal, or we have our new um, email set up, 
It is donate at cslvictoria.org where you can send an e-transfer and it will go directly into our bank account and our treasurer will be informed of that so that you'll get a tax receipt from it. We really appreciate your gifts. They mean so much to us. They always do, but particularly during the time of COVID because they help us to keep on going and to know that we're going to have our beautiful facility there waiting for us when we go back again. So I, I, I thank you for all that you do, for all that you give, and I thank you for the volunteerism of so many of you. You know, the, it means so much to have, to have you giving gifts of yourselves uh, to, to our center and to each, each and every one of us. I just feel as we go into this week, and I would like to invite Reverend Jennifer to pray us out of our, of our service today. Thank you, Reverend Jeremy. And I invite everyone to join with me. In this moment, this holy moment, this now moment of power. As Reverend Carey was describing our own journeys, our difficulties, and the experiences of others that are also in difficult situations. Forgiveness, the understanding, the compassion that lifts us out of judgment, frustration, and distress. As we go in, within our own heart, seeking out that love, love of beauty, joy of daffodils, crocuses, and snowdrops, and anything else that blossoms, this beauty is the gift of our life. And there are far more gifts that are invisible. And as we know this truth, I invite you to hold in compassion those who are struggling with the conditions that COVID has placed on our fellow human beings, those people who are distressed, those people who are struggling, those people who are frustrated, and those people who are desperate. And I invite you to see the beauty in their being. Not what we see, but what we know is true. Kingdom of heaven is within them. The presence of God is within them. The love and the beauty of God is within them. Even though they can't see it themselves. We are called. The universe spirit is calling us to witness the beauty, the peace, the stillness, the joy. know is within everyone. As we acknowledge and realize the presence in every condition, the presence becomes real and transforms and elevates and lifts and lightens and releases those so burdened, release them into freedom, into peace, all through grace. As I embrace this truth, this truth of love, compassion, as the nature of God, I know that it expresses ease and grace. And I am witness to the transformation of winter into spring, dreariness into blossoms and joy and sunlight. So too, do I say that same transition in those around us. 
the love and gratitude I give thanks. I release my word knowing it is already done. I let it go. I invite everyone to join with me. And so it is. It is. Thank you, God. Thank you so much, Reverend Jennifer. And thank you all for being here.